Hey, good morning. It's 9.09. Oh, I'm sorry. It's 9.09 a.m. It is January 16th. It is Tuesday morning and I want to well, wish everyone a bright and happy day. Unfortunately, it is not bright outside right now. It's very cloudy and I'm very disappointed by that because last night I was sitting in bed. I went to bed fairly early last night because I just wanted to shut my brain down like the boredom was really getting to me. And the feeling of burnout was just overwhelming. I'm like, my brain just couldn't take it. So I just wanted to shut it down. So I did, you know, climb in bed. I had some music on and just kind of rested. And I kept thinking, I need to change my routine. You know, um, I did work on some content for Patreon yesterday. And um, I got some things together and I... I feel kind of demoralized because of what's going on right now with my account, but I feel like I need to continue on anyway. But still, I did get a lot of stuff done, but I was still like not really, I was, I'm just a little frustrated, that's all. But so today, my plan was when I got up was I was going to get dressed and I was going to go up to the church that's up the street because I wanted to, I wanted to take advantage of the church bell. Now, I know I've always had an interest in bells. Um, and I, I remember when I was younger, there was a church bell that would be on the west side of town, but I could hear it on the east side of town. And I was always happy to hear it. And I would keep track of the times that, <laughs> that the bell would ring. Now, I am not a church. I'm not a Christian. I am not a, somebody who goes to church, but I do believe that there's a lot of power in that bell now each church has their own like i don't know tradition behind the reasons why they ring the church bell um it used to be used sometimes in churches to get people together for prayer at a certain time and um it's also when you look into the history of church bells the, the idea of the bell is also to disperse evil or disperse negativity or whatever so I kept thinking, I need to do that. I need to clear my mind. So I figured I would just walk up to the church and I wanted it to be a sunny day. I want to do this on a sunny day where I can feel like the intense vibration of the sun and the bell at the same time. So I got up this morning and it was cloudy. I'm like, shit. <laughs> okay, scratch that. So I, I, I just feel a little like, you know, frustrated because things don't always work out the way that I want them to, you know. And um, anyway, but I, I do enjoy church bells. And um, I, to me, they have this like little mysterious type vibe to them. Just because when you like look into the history of it, you know, you do see that it does have spiritual power. And it's something that I do appreciate, you know. So anyway, um I wanted to go into some of the intuitive messages that I got. I've been doing a lot of meditating. So much, too much med meditation. I mean, I don't get me wrong. You know, I love being an intuitive person and I love like getting messages, but it's the same shit over and over and over again, you know, and don't get me wrong. It's cool coming to, to realize that I have this interesting background and everything. But it's the, it's the tragedy behind it. You know what I mean? It's like, okay. <laughs> Which, you know, I do appreciate because I get a lot of feeling from people, you know, on a psychic level that people are starting to realize, you know, that, um, that, yeah, you know, just because I realize that I'm this person doesn't mean that I feel like super happy because what goes on in my mind is, you know, of course, the betrayal, the, the fake family, the, you know, the perpy quote unquote, so-called friends and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, that's, that's the stuff that, that goes through my mind a lot. Um, and a, a little bit too much, you know what I mean? It's like, I figured it, once you chisel everything down and you get to the root of it, that's really enough. And then I get all these little itsy bitsy details that it's just like, okay, that person did that to me. Really? Okay. It just, it just, it's too much. It's just too fucking much. But anyway, um, I did get some messages about there's people in like the China Lake and Ridgecrest area who also wonder, are they possible homes? And there's a lot of people are kind of waking up a little bit. Um, Lancaster, California. Let me kind of describe like how the Antelope Valley 
works, okay? I mean, I wouldn't consider China Lake or Ridgecrest a part of the Antelope Valley, but it's within that vicinity. There's like, you know, we have those bases there. I'm not going to say the base, okay? But we have like, you know, the base that my father worked on and all the surrounding areas. So that would be like, and I lived in basically all of them because, you know, I worked at the, um, the base at one time many, many years ago. Um, I got a job there and I was happy to get the job there really because I went through hell and I wanted to be independent and not rely on government assistance and I wanted to work. Okay, I, I'm the kind of person with taking my shit seriously. So, you know, um, I got a job there, right? Anyway, um, and I would live in the surrounding areas because the rent was so fucking cheap, right? <laughs> so, like, I'm from Lancaster. So, I, would, I moved to Rosemond. I moved to the California City area that's surrounding it. And just about everybody in the Antelope Valley at one time, the Antelope Valley used to be fueled mainly by the aerospace industry, right? So, most of the people worked in aerospace, whatever. There were several companies that were, that were supporting those things. And then there was like, or you worked in education, you know, and of course you have people who have worked for the retail and stuff like that, but those were like the main source of the economy or in that, in that community. Right. So like people in Palmdale, Lancaster, I would say even Little Rock, um, these sort of areas, you know, there might be people who, um, that you might think, man, they're, they're different. They're very different. They're you know, um, the girl that I, I remember hanging out with, um, she was like one of my first playmates in, in elementary school because she lived in the same similar area of mine. I'm not going to go mention names or anything like that. But I noticed, I noticed as myself that she seemed perfect. Not perfect, okay, like perfect, perfect. But she seemed like better, like she excelled better. And she was very like, you know, um, skilled, you know, different things or trained in certain things or whatever. And I noticed this myself. Okay. I didn't really understand the whole origins of all this stuff when I was growing up or anything, but I understand that. And I also recognize that there was like a Hitler clone too in my vicinity. Okay. But anyway, um, there's certain traits that, you know, you'll, you'll see in a person. And since people are starting to understand and wake up to this clone issue, I want to make sure that you guys don't make problems for the clone that you suspect by like spreading it around or anything like that. It's just be respectful. They, it, nobody had a choice. They didn't ask to be here. They didn't, I, obviously they did in a spiritual way, but their ability of coming here and the consequences that they're having to deal with really isn't, is beyond their control. Okay. And it's not like they, they um, you know, they're, they're, they're here to be peaceful. Okay. Um, for the most part, I don't know about the, the Hitler clone, but whatever. Anyway, uh, <laughs> um, I remember seeing someone that I suspected even here in my community, like about two years ago, um, I was at Trader Joe's, um, and this man was walking in the aisle and he gave off this, I'm going to say maybe like maybe German vibe. Um, he, he, he definitely looked like he was from like an old time in, in Europe. Okay. And I will say he was very handsome. Now I wasn't looking at him like because he was hot or I wasn't looking at him in a lustful way. I was looking at the fact that he was goddamn beautiful. Like, you know, a piece of art is what I'm saying. He looked like he was a fucking piece of art. He had like, um, um, porcelain type skin. His hair, I mean, his, um, yeah, his hair was dark, okay, which the contrast, okay, is striking against, you know, you got the light skin, you got the dark hair, and then he had these beautiful blue eyes, right? Bam, right? Like, he's just fucking gorgeous. And I got like, my God, he's beautiful. And he was dressed differently. He looked like he was maybe dressed in a time period. And I understand that clones tend to dress what they're used to, what they're drawn to, and not necessarily be honed into whatever the current fashion is. So he looked like he was from like the old school. Okay. He had a cardigan on. He had like these nice pants that they were matching and his shoes. And what also I noticed about him were his children. His children look like storybook children. They look like the, I don't know, maybe some of you guys may be too young to remember or, or know who Dick and Jane are like Dick and Jane books 
when you were a kid, like his fucking kids looked like they came right out of those pages. They were dressed that way. And they were so like, I don't know, like, um, super, I, I, what they would call like ideal feminine, but pro proper, polite, um, children, you know? And I kept thinking, man, like, where did these people come from? You know, where did they come from? Like, they just seemed beautiful, but they seemed very odd. Okay. Because they stand out. They automatically stand out. They just do. So anyway, um, that's that. Yeah. So if you're in those areas, um, I would say, and then also, sorry, I was getting off the subject. I was like veering off into the Trader Joe's story. And I was talking about like this, the surrounding areas of like, you know, these particular bases. So there's like the base that is close to my house in Lancaster, Palmdale, and then the surrounding areas, which would be Cal City, Rosemond. I would say even going so far out to like Little Rock and then um, those areas where people lived in, they were primarily funded, um, the community was primarily funded by this particular industry. And then we have China Lake and we have Ridge Press and all that stuff, right? So, yeah, um, yeah, chances are there are. As a matter of fact, when I was working um, at that job that I had mentioned earlier, that I had met a workmate that, um, that also had very interesting traits. Like she, she and I would talk about psychic powers a lot. And I would talk to her about, you know, my interests or whatever. She seemed like she understood a little bit what I was saying. Okay. She may have not have been like way off as far as I was, but she was very, um, she had her own form of intuition. Okay. And we would talk about stuff like that. And she also liked to experiment with clothes. She was very into her own thing. You know what I mean? It's just like, we are very content in our own world. Okay. And we create our own reality and we're satisfied with them. You know, and these are the sort of traits that stand out because that automatically makes this different than other people. Right. So yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. So there's a lot of people wondering about that. I'm going to say, yeah, probably. Yeah, definitely. Anyway. Um, also that person that I was talking about, um, the, the, um, the, uh, oh gosh, I can't think of it right now. What is it? What I'm trying to say, um, the person who makes these videos about the lineage of, um, Prince Alame, who I really do want to reach out to him and I, and talk to him. I, I haven't watched all his videos. I watched like one or two of them. And actually I watched two of them, um, while I was in bed one morning and I subscribed to his channel and I'm really looking forward to just like sitting in bed one day and just relaxing and watching like the whole, his whole their video series, right? Right now, I'm a little afraid to delve too deeply into the Prince Alamehu thing and I'm, I'm doing a little bit, but some of it just, just raises or triggers more like, I don't know, triggers more stuff in me, okay? So, I have to kind of take this thing easy because a lot of it's really deep on my mind. Like it just kind of flips me out a little bit. But the videos that I did see of his are really, really good. And I do hope to contact this person in the future. But, um, you know, this is weird. So um, I, I want to handle it delicately. I do believe that he knows who I am though. Anyway, also, um, people are thanking me for addressing the college scam issue. Um, I, I do believe in education. I truly believe in knowledge. You know, I mean, this is one of the reasons why I was able to identify exactly what was going on in my targeting. Okay. Um, but I do see that there's a lot of people who are going through these education, not just college, but the education system in general. Okay. And I'm, everything I think is, is kind of political, but I fucking don't want to get involved in politics. But anyway, um, you know, they were talking, asking people randomly, like, you know, when was the United States discovered? And these kids are coming up with answers like 1901. Stuff like this, you know, obviously tells me that there is a major problem. You know what I mean? I have educated people targeting and harassing me, violating every rule in the book, but somehow they're like gainfully employed or they're, they're not sweating their problems, right? It's like there obviously is a lot of upside down 
bullshit that goes on that I am starting to understand that I don't have any control over. You know, I can acknowledge it, and, and I think a lot of people are acknowledging it. It's like, because I know there's a lot of people. And I remember my dad used to talk about people whose kids that he knew who weren't getting jobs or whatever. They were going to school, and that doesn't guarantee anything. College, to me, is a, um, especially if the system is manipulated. If the system is manipulated to where you have these, like, little networks setting you up in jobs, right, then your education is worthless. If that's how the system operates, even though there's laws against it, but if it works that way, then it's a waste of your time to even go to college. If that's how the system works. Now, if, uh, but even if it didn't work that way, okay, if it didn't work that way, if you, it's still a gamble because, you know, that doesn't, there, there's so many, it's so competitive in the drug market, right? It's very competitive, but it still doesn't guarantee that you're going to get your foot in the door. You know, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of time, you know, that um, people put into it. And if that is, if this first case scenario that I mentioned about, you know, if it only works that way to where people are manipulating things behind the scenes of who gets what and how far they go in life, okay, then, yeah, definitely 100% your college education is worthless. It's absolutely fucking worthless. But anyway, moving on. That was one of the messages that I got. Also, people think that um, that my life is happy. But, um, and I, I'm i sitting here thinking, my life is so fucked. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, right now I'm having issues, you know. Um, but I... I'm having issues dealing with like weird mood swings because, you know, I want to be happy all the time. I want to be bubbly all the time. You know what I mean? Because when I'm happy, I get shit done. You know what I mean? And I'm bouncing around and I'm talking about stuff, you know, that maybe nobody gives a shit about. But the point is I'm talking. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm, I'm chatty. I want to be, you know, social. I want to be, you know, open. I want to be you know, into my projects one after another, I buzz around. I don't sit around on my bed all the time, you know? Um, and so I'm dealing with a lot of demoralizing shit that goes on in my head that I really wish I had control over. But that's one of the reasons why I wanted to go to the church bell today because I wanted to sit there and hopefully even see it move. Like I want to see like the church like bell like move. And then I wanted to like have it be I wanted to, to take it away. You know what I mean? Yeah, Maria is always spell working <laughs> all the time. And if, you know what? If people don't like that, that's that's their choice, okay? But I tend to take advantage of the things that are around me, and I appreciate the church bell. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to do that. I wanted to work on my mood. My mood is always like down. You know, I I I, I noticed that it's taking me, and I hate this fact, right? I hate the fact that um when i'm down i put things off you know what i mean because i'm a morning person i'm a morning person i mean i literally want to just like hit the ground running and if i wake up and, and say i'm going to clean out the cabinets and cupboards i want to do that but like you know i don't like sitting around like oh it's all hopeless what's the point of doing that what's the point of doing anything you know so I finally got a chance to clean out my cupboards, you know what I mean? But it was not on the scheduled time that I had set for myself. And some people will think, well, don't be so hard on yourself. I hate that mentality. I mean, I hate, I, I'm so self-disciplined that I discipline myself and hate my own mentality for when I put shit off. Like, you know, I'm, I want to, I like my little happy world and contentment. And I am not content right now. But anyway, but I'm glad that people do understand, you know, that I am suffering. And they understand why I suffer mental issues, you know. that I'm surprised I'm not in a mental institution. But obviously, because of my intellect and obviously my life experiences, experiences, <laughs> plural, right, um, has led me to be able to cope with this. I'm sure a lot of people would have killed themselves by now, right? Which I'm sure that was what they were hoping for. Also, people, you know, think it's okay that I speak about the racial injustice. I think people get the message. 
you know, it was terrible. It was, it was a nightmare. I, I want to move on from it. You know what I mean? I think some people would have used this as an excuse to, to launch a launch. Yeah, I'm tongue tied right now. Um, with, to launch some sort of like racial tension or whatever. I'm not into that. You know what I mean? It's like, it's hell enough without, you know, people arguing and like trying to one up somebody. I'm not into that. I just want to get seriously. I just want to get through this life. Whatever bullshit I need to deal with, I need to deal with it. I don't need to make a, some sort of uproar. And I also want to say that so many people were in this whole issue got involved in something and they were used, okay? Like, for example, you know, obviously this was a racial issue from people who wanted to target me for my racial background, right? But they will use people of my own race against me. Okay, I had Asian people disrespecting me. I had, you know, Mexican people disrespecting me at one time. Everybody got used in this, okay? Everybody did. So, I mean, I just look at it like, man, you know, um, that's what you get for having the herd mentality. That's, that's just the way I look at it. So, it's like, you know, everybody really feel, should be guilty at this point. Also... So it's not really so much. It is a racial issue, but like I said, you know, like, I mean, it is what it is. Anyway, when it comes to the issue of my Patreon account, I have been very frustrated with the issue. Okay. So I think when it comes to, in my case, obviously what the deal is, is that I'm dealing with people who I have a look, a little cult around me, not a cult like Manson cult, but like a little group of people who are following her. And some of these people are very important people. I mean, they're notable people. Okay. Um, what I think is, what, what, what would be a good idea for, for these sort of situations is to create like, um, maybe like a VIP private list, right? To where people could mark themselves as private and it goes on this list. It would show up as like maybe member number one, member number two, whatever, right? This way, um, it would let them have their privacy, but it would also let the person who is doing these videos know, hey, you know, I'm being watched by important people. It would be an incentive for them to up their game a little bit when it comes to their content. Unlike the presentation, the content, the, the I don't know, visuals, everything that you could. It would help you, it would help encourage you, motivate you. To do your very best. You know what I mean? I think it would work out for both people. Okay? That's my issue and my suggestion when it comes to this sluggish issue that's going on with Taylor Shannon Pan. The other option would be for them to scramble their email. Now, you know, the thing is, when I first created my Patreon channel, um, I am offering a newsletter and I thought I was going to have to email the newsletter to every single member of it. See, because I didn't understand how the platform worked, right? The thing is, it's not that's not necessary. You can just go ahead and post it. So there's no need for me to have their email anyway. So it's like, you know, that that's an issue when it comes to their privacy issues. And that's just my suggestion, okay? I need to move on with my life. I'm very frustrated right now because I want to put out content and I want to, you know, I mean, this is my a part of my life. It's it's what I'm doing now. It's what I'm into now. It's it's important to me. Anyway, also, um, I do want to say thank you for the people who have connected with me on Instagram. I do appreciate it. For sometimes, um, like yesterday was a really bad day for me. I was like at a very, very low point. There's not all, sometimes I'm very sluggish when it comes to um, responding. Also, um, um, I, I do have phone issues, right? I, I have phone issues a lot because my battery wears down. And some people will say, we just go get yourself a phone, another phone. I understand that, but okay, that's one of my sluggish issues. Like I'm not on it. Like I should have replaced the phone a long time ago. Um, yeah, I've been just not really motivated to do stuff. When I'm not motivated, I'm just sitting around like with the fuck. Yeah, I'll blame that on laziness. Anyway, um, yeah, um, about the people being sympathetic, I do appreciate. Um, that, you know, I'm not somebody who likes people. I don't like, I've never liked people feeling sorry for me or anything like that. Um, but I do appreciate the fact that people understand the, the issue relating to my targeting, what I experienced and why, um, I would be, 
in the weird moods, why it affects my mood so much, you know. Um, so some people think that, um, like, you know, I remember somebody making comments at work about, you have everything. Oh, yeah, I was in this, like, argument with this girl, right? And she's like, well, what are you complaining? You have everything. And I'm like, I don't have shit. I'm 53 years old. I'm in an apartment, right? I've always had, I've always been unstable. Not me being unstable. I showed up to work every day. You know what I mean? But I've always had uh, the issues of being unstable. You know what I mean? I've never been able to stand on my feet without having some sort of interruption in my workplace. Some sort of bullying that goes on. I've never been able to um, complete a lot of things. Like, you know, I, I, would, I would go to certain meetings or whatever, and then it would get weird, and so I, I'd stop going. It's, I've always had this problem. You know what I mean? So, oh, and then you think about somebody who never had any sort of emotional foundation. Like, I thought, as shitty as they were, I thought I had a family. And then I had actors, is what I had. You know what I mean? And the people that I used to know were just informants. It's very, it's, it's like people think that that's, that because, you know, I'm associated with, I have this soul tribe that I'm connected with that, and I am grateful. Don't get me wrong. I, I'm so grateful for the people who, and then when I say soul tribe, I mean like people that I was destined to have a connection with. That's what I mean by that. Okay. So that's what the term means. Okay. Believe me, I think it's silly too, but that's the word that people use. So whatever. Anyway, um, it is cool to be associated with these people. Okay. But the pain that I had to deal with is not cool. <laughs> not cool at all, you know, and, and it's very, it's very sad, you know, and so um, I just believe that everybody gets their fair share of hell while they're living here, you know what I mean? See, people think the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence, you know, um, there's a lot of people who, <clears throat> who suffer, you know, and people think that certain things in life is like the solution. Like I mentioned, the person who might have a shitload of money, but you know, they might be, you know, have their uh, family secretly wants them dead so they can get life insurance, you know, or, or in, inherit something. You know what I mean? It's, it's like, and so they basically don't have a peace of mind because like they're always worried, are, are they going to poison me? Are they going to try to kill me? People suffer in some way, you know what I mean? Just because somebody has money doesn't mean that they don't have problems and they don't suffer and they don't have pain. It's like everybody's got pain, you know what I mean? So, um, also, um, the message that I got is I know that people want the pr Prince Alame whose story opened. Um, there was a window that I had suggested, um, but there really isn't, doesn't seem like there's anything that's really preventing the story from being released. So I, I don't know what's going to happen with that. I think most people already know. I think what people really want is for it to be officially announced and acknowledged. And those things are officially announced on things like, you know, C not C maybe CNN. I don't know. I haven't watched. I literally don't watch TV anymore. I don't watch it. You know, um, the only things that I really do watch are things like um, YouTube videos. I'll watch those. Um, every once in a blue moon, I'll take in a movie. And then um, a couple days ago, <laughs> <laughs> now, what was that? I think on New Year's Eve or Eve this day or something, I was watching Garfield and Friends, like, <laughs> multiple episodes. <laughs> you know, I don't really watch TV, um, but I, when it comes to news channels, like, like, on your local news or, like, on a major channel, like, you know, NBC, ABC, um, Fox or something like that. So, I think that's what people are are wanting what they want, you know what I mean? And so, um, you know, like I said, I moved on. And I think I do believe that the majority of people here in this country, at least, know because people know who I am, regardless of the fact that, you know, my, my channel numbers have been skewed or whatever. People know who I am. If you get blacklisted, people fucking know who you are. You know what I mean? It is what it is. 
So anyway, I think I did pretty good on this video, meaning like I didn't go into the whole, um, you know, I don't want to like spew hate in this issue um, about the people on the higher level of the pyramid. I just really do want to move on. You know what I mean? And and um, I don't want to spew hate towards my um, ex-family members either or the people that I grew up with or whatever it is. It's like, you know, but I do hope that this is like an example of how sick things can actually get. You know what I mean? This is a good example that this is a sort of, this is the purpose of what they said history. Like, you know, and I asked the teacher like, hey, you know, what is the point of this? You know, um, uh, when, she, when they said that understanding history is to make sure that it doesn't repeat itself. That's what, that's what their answer was. But you know what? Guess what it did. You know what I mean? So hopefully, you know, this should be eye-opening enough that hopefully it doesn't happen to another person again. Anyway, I'm going to wrap up this video. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and maybe I might get to that church bell tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.